All right. So white light consists of a broad spectrum of colors. Each color is associated with a particular frequency of the wave. And you, as you know, you can split out white light on a prism, and it gives you all these beautiful uh, frequency components of a rainbow. So the question now is, is there some information in this frequency spectrum? And indeed there is. So that gets us to some experimental results that were quite puzzling in the eight, late 1800s that dealt with discrete optical spectra, photoelectric effect, and the particle wave duality. All right, so people like to burn things, like some flames uh, of some gases or burn materials. And that, those were some of the early experiments. And they, people sent the light that came out of these flames through a prism. And what they saw is that uh, there's actually a discrete spectrum. It's not a continuum spectrum. And that was quite puzzling. Uh, it wasn't clear why that is. All they knew is that that is true. And it, they also find out that it's really a, a characteristic of, of each material. It's like a fingerprint. So the hydrogen, hydrogen spectrum, for example, is very different from the iron spectrum. Right? Very different. But, I mean, this might be very natural to you by now, but it was very puzzling to people. And there was no theory that really explained why that is and where that comes from. Um, we use that today even, uh, like the, in big parking lots, right? You might have a, a sodium lamp, an orangey light, uh, high-powered sodium lamp, uh, where a lot of energy is converted into a single frequency that is visible to the human eye. Um, out of that really came the development of atomic models, where people said, well, uh, there's these discrete frequencies, and electrons can hop between these local orbiting, uh, local orbits. And when they hop down from an orbit, there's a photon coming out, there's light coming out, and it's of a discrete frequency. Uh, that was ultimately developed in a quantum mechanical model way of different uh, orbitals other than these, these circular orbits. And that was really uh, uh, the advent of quantum mechanics in a sense, that where the electrons are standing waves that are bound by a core, and the discrete transitions between energies leads to, leads to discrete spectra. Right? So this is, should be very familiar to you. Uh, so, so that led to the advent of quantum mechanics as such. But then there was another experiment that was very puzzling. Actually, it was first observed uh, in 1839, and uh, it wasn't explained until 55 years later. And here's the experiment. People were shining light on a metallic surface, and they saw electrons come out. It's the so-called photoelectric effect. But there were some puzzling things about this. Um, so if if there is sort of a binding energy of these electrons in this material, uh, and you set the vacuum level to, say, zero, and there's some binding energy, uh, there shouldn't be a, a, a... If you shine a light, you would think that uh, uh, electrons uh, uh, should gather up some energy until they're ready to come out, right? But it turns out, as soon as you turn on light, the electrons come out. Uh, it wasn't like a gathering of energy type effect for them to come out, but uh, they come out immediately. Um, and the increasing the light intensity, so the more, uh, uh, the stronger the light you put in, it increases the number of the electrons, but not their energy. Right? You would normally think you put in more energy, they, they all have more velocity and come out with a higher energy, but that wasn't the case. That was also not quite understood. Uh, and also, if you shine in red light onto uh, this particular metal, I forgot what it was, it, it will not cause emission, no matter, no matter how intense you put the light on there. Okay, so red light didn't cut it, even though you, you could make it very hot with red light, right? And put in a lot of energy, but these electrons still wouldn't come out. So, 
But weak violet light will eject few electrons with very high energy. And uh, what that really meant is that light had to have a minimum frequency or color to excite these electrons. So if that is this minimum frequency, they also found that the emitted electrons have a, have a light energy dependent energy. So they're the extra energy they have depends on the difference of the actual frequency of the light coming in minus this minimum energy. Okay? So this really won Einstein the Nobel Prize in 1921 where he declared that light can be described by discrete particles of discrete energy with Planck's constant E equals HF. That was the fundamental explanation of the photoelectric effect. And that meant light energy is not divisible, it's photons. And you have to have a minimum energy to kick out an electron from the bound state. That means the remaining kinetic energy that you have is the light energy minus the binding energy. And that explains all of these sort of puzzles that existed. Realize it took 55 years to, for somebody to figure that out. Okay, It wasn't obvious. And the theory is very different from what was known at the time. Okay, and we somewhat we take this for granted now, even though we don't necessarily think about it on a day-to-day -day basis. So then the the upshot of this light consists of particles, photons. But I thought light is wave. So what's up with that? So so there's this particle wave duality where all particles have wave properties where they can interfere, diffract, and form standing waves. And all waves have particle properties that have momentum, have energy, and create, can be created or destroyed. And the typical description you choose is, well, depending on what interaction you want to look at. So you use energy and frequency and momentum uh, as typical descriptors, and you use a set of discrete quantum numbers that describe the discreteness when needed. And you choose which one you use depending on your problem that you try to solve. There is no truth in one or the other. Okay? Those two are strongly connected. So let me try to play some more mind games with you. If electrons and atoms are attracted, say confined by an atomic core, we know that they have quantized in energy and localized orbitals, right? So that's what we know about quantum mechanics, that's how it was discovered. So, but what if you can confine it in a man-made structure that is small, in a small space, and the material is sort of clean? That sounds like an artificial atom. If you can confine electrons to a small space where there's long uh, uh, coherence times, you create an artificial atom and that's a quantum dot. 